That's why people try to please. Oh. People Sorry. try to please Simon because he's gonna be the first one to insult you. Nah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. We are live already, and it is uh, Thursday morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Say good, good morning. Good morning. Okay. I hope you guys are done with breakfast or are still at breakfast, but it's time for us to do our gospel commentary. And today we have a very, very interesting gospel to read. Um, and it highlights one of my favorite virtues. Okay? So let's go right ahead and reading it. Yeah. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats. There were two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. This must be early morning. They had already finished fishing See, because normally the fishermen would fish at night, right? And then, so they must have been done with fishing, so they were now disembarking from uh, their boats. And getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, uh, he asked him to put out a short distance from the, uh, from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. So he orders Simon Peter, Okay. Go out there deeper. Go to the deeper uh, part and let's fish again. Put down your nets for a catch. Let's go fishing. So <laughs> Simon Peter must have scratched his head. Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. Wait, wait. Simon Peter is an expert. He was the expert fisherman. Okay. And he has gone out there the whole night fishing. And they caught nothing. And then here comes a carpenter. <laughs> a carpenter. Jesus telling the expert fisherman, go. Go out into the deep. Let's go fishing. So you can just imagine the confusion of St. Peter here, right? Or or the perhaps the, uh, you know, the... <laughs> disillusionment of St. Peter. I said, why? why? Why should I go out there again? I just came from there and I caught nothing. And here is a carpenter, Jesus, telling me, go out again. Okay, you'll see. Um, but, he says, but at your command, I will lower the nets. Okay? But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. When he had done this great number of fish. And their nets were tearing. They signaled to the partners in their other boats to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. So now they caught so much, so many. Right? When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me. Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. <coughs> Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. What virtue did Simon Peter exhibit here that caused the great miracle of the catch of fish? What? What virtue? Obedience. Right? Obedience. The obedience of Saint Peter brought about the great miracle of that great catch of fish. And, and besides the, the material uh, miracle, what was the other miracle that was produced in Peter? Conversion. Conversion. Very good. Right? Conversion. See? He said, 
when he knelt before Jesus and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. That miracle of conversion happened because of St. Peter's obedience. Okay? So let's talk about obedience, folks. Let's talk about obedience. One of, I might say, one of the hardest virtues uh, to, to live uh, every day. But uh, it is also one of the most important virtues that will bring plenty of miracles in our lives. Eh? Plenty of miracles, in our, especially in our spiritual lives. Obedience causes plenty of good. Now, let's, let's try to review a little bit. What is the virtue of obedience all about? What do we do when we obey? Huh? Yeah, Joe. What do we do when we obey? We do what we're told. Yeah, you do what you're told, yeah. But what are you doing when you are obeying? What are you actually doing? What are you? What are you? What are you uh, exercising? What are you exhibiting? What are you showing? What are you? Huh? Humility. Yeah, yeah. Humility. What are you submitting to? Authority. You are submitting to authority. What are you submitting to authority? Service. What is it in you that you are submitting to authority? Yourself. <laughs> yeah, what about yourself? Particularly what about yourself are you submitting to authority? Your what are your highest faculties? What are your highest faculties? What are the faculties of the soul, Mia? Intellect and will. Intellect and will. Very good. See? Okay. Intellect and will. So when you are obeying, what is it particularly about these faculties that you are submitting to authority? Your will. Your will. Eh? Your will. Obedience is the submission of one's will to that of another. You are submitting. Sub means putting yourself under okay? the authority of somebody else. Okay? We, and that is what makes obedience a very difficult virtue. Why? Because we are giving up one of the two most important and highest faculties that we as human beings have been gifted by, by God. See, that instead of doing our own thing, instead of pursuing what we want to do for ourselves, by ourselves, we are actually submitting ourselves under the authority of somebody else. And that, that is not an easy thing to do. But mind you, while it is not easy, it is one of the most important things that you can do in your life. And it's, obedience is not only a virtue for children. Obedience is a virtue for everybody to live by. Children, teenagers, adults, and old folks, everybody. Everybody has to obey somebody. Everybody always has authority to subject himself to. Number one, of course... The greatest of all authority is that of God. Right? It is to God that ultimately we owe all of our obedience. But God uses <clears throat> different instruments in our own um, uh, environments from the family to uh, society to government. Okay? He uses all of these other instruments to, uh, to, to help us curb that will. There are always several of these layers of authority around us that we uh, subject our will to. Okay? Because our Lord, God, communicates His will for us through the authority of people around us. Through the circumstances of, the, of life that happens to us every day. You see, God communicates His will 
uh, in many different ways um, uh, for our for our life. See? It is not only uh, through parents who tell their children what to do. It is not only through uh, bosses at uh, at work who tell their employees or subordinates what they need to do. It's not only through government see, that uh, imposes laws uh, and makes us uh, obey laws, but even circumstances, ordinary circumstances that happen all throughout the day, things that we perhaps did not even plan for, but happened to us in the course of one day, those are avenues by which God communicates His will to us. And those circumstances, especially in those circumstances where we are not directly commanded to do something, it is especially in those circumstances that we have to be sensitive to listening to the will of God. See? Okay? Let's be sensitive to the will of God. So, let us examine. Let's examine, folks. Let's look at what are the different elements of obedience to help us, uh, to help us live this virtue a little bit better every day. And then we'll go to some other examples later, okay? Um, there are five things, five things we need to uh, employ, we need to use, we need to put together in order for us to be able to obey properly. Okay? And uh, most of this we've been talking about already here in our own home. Okay? We, we, we know the hallmarks, right, of obedience. Can we name the first one? Humility. <laughs> Humility. Humility. <clears throat> Humility is a very important component of obedience. Why? Well, because we are submitting. Submitting. To submit means to put yourself under, right? Somebody else's authority. So we need to be humble. Could you imagine Peter, the expert St. Peter, the expert fisherman, okay? He could have ex uh, asserted himself and said, well, what do you know? You're a carpenter. Why do you tell me to go out again? I just came from there. I know that uh, lake. I know exactly where the fish are. I know what to, how to do my job. Who are you to tell me to go out there again and fish? Our St. Peter could have ex asserted himself, right? But no, he decided, I am going to be humble. I will be humble and, uh, you know, <laughs> submit to the authority of this carpenter. Okay? Humility. Second element that it should be part of obedience huh to obey cheerfully. jacob to obey cheerfully okay to obey cheerfully to obey uh, uh gladly not grudgingly not dragging your feet not with a long face <laughs> not in a pessimistic way but cheerfully to cheerfully accept what you're being told okay Always, always obey with a smile, even if it is difficult. And even if it is difficult to do what you're being asked to do, obey with a smile. Because, because that is already an indication of your true willingness to obey. See? If, if, if you're really willing to obey, it will show in, in, your, in the way that you uh, accept it, in your demeanor, in your outward appearance. Okay? It is going to show. So obey cheerfully. What else? Number three? Intelligently. Ah, Mia! To obey intelligently. Okay? To obey intelligently. Okay? Don't be like a Dumbo or like a robot when you're told, do this, and you immediately head off to do it without thinking about how you're going to do it. Okay? That is not obedience. Yes, Joe? Tell the story. What story? Okay, wait a minute. We don't have much time. Not uh, No time for stories now. Uh, we can tell it next time. Okay. Obey intelligently. What does that mean? We have, when we obey, we have to be thinking of the best ways by which he can carry out what we are being told to do. See? Well, look at St. Peter, for example. When he was told, cast the net. He didn't just throw the net and say, okay, let's see what happens. No. Right? That's rebellion. <laughs> That's not obedience. 
But no, St. Peter must have thought and usually said, okay, wait a minute, we already did this last night. It didn't work. So let me see, how else can we do this? How can, how can we improve this fishing thing and maybe have a greater chance of uh, getting uh, fish, right? May, okay, can you help me here? Can you pull that thing there? Can we pull it? Can we do it this way? Can we lay it down this way? He must have used his head. Isn't that familiar? <laughs> Use your head, right? When you obey. He must have thought, what is the best way to carry out what um, Jesus is telling me now? Now think of, think of other mo the, the obedient uh, people in, in the Gospels that we've been hearing about. Think, think of St. Joseph. When he was told by the angel, get up, Joseph, take the child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Okay, flee into Egypt, but what am I going to do there? I'm going to just sit there and, uh, you know, wait until what happens. And will I just wait for another announcement from you? No, no. St. Joseph went to work. He established his carpentry business there. He did something uh, to, to make the family uh, uh, live comfortably as best he could. You know, he, they lived a normal family life. And Joseph had to think of ways and means of doing that in a foreign country like Egypt. Okay? He just didn't go there and, and, and sat idly by and didn't know what to do. No. So use your head, right? When you are told to obey, when you're told to do something, obey intelligently. Okay. What else? Number four? Immediately. Obey immediately. Right? You obey immediately. You don't postpone when you will obey. Okay? You don't say, okay, uh, uh, Chevelle, do this. Wait, Papa. Later, Papa. No, right? That is not obedience anymore. If you postpone your so-called obedience, you're actually not obeying anymore. Okay? You have already started to disobey. When you, when you postpone what you're told to do, what do you call that? That's no longer obedience. You're just complying. That is just compliance. Okay? And compliance is not the same as obedience. Okay? Compliance is you just do something for the sake of doing it. Okay? That is not obedience. Obedience means to do things that you're told to do right away. Okay, and then the last, the fifth element of obedience is? Huh? Completely. To obey completely. Meaning, meaning what does obeying completely mean? Okay? It means to do everything that you are told to do from beginning to end, right? Now, you don't stop halfway or you don't, uh, you know, you, you don't uh, uh, do anything uh, that is going to hamper the fulfillment of the task, right? And part of obeying completely is to report back, right? To report back and you tell him, okay. Mission accomplished. Okay, well, Papa, I'm done. You asked me to do this. I'm done. It's done. This is the way I did it. See? You report back. That is the way that you obey. So let's review. Five elements of obedience. First is? Humility. humility. Obey. Wait. Obey humbly. Let's make it an, uh, <laughs> an adjective. Obey humbly. Obey. Cheerfully. 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 Obey. Intelligently. Intelligently. Obey immediately first and lastly obey completely. Okay, so the five hallmarks of obedience. Yes, yeah. Okay, you postpone your question, Satan. So the greatest saints that we know of, particularly our lady and Saint Joseph, had obeyed. Obeyed. Obedience was one of the, the hallmarks of their sanctity. Right? And you and I too, you and I too, uh, should practice obedience if we are to strive every day for sanctity. And as I was saying earlier, you know, uh, obedience is not only for children. Obedience, especially to authority, civil authority, um, ha can happen every day for us. And especially obedience to the will of God, which is, who is the ultimate authority. It happens every day for us. And you know, folks, uh, just for the older folks around here listening to us, um, you'll often hear the word resignation. Right? 
Oh, I'm trying to resign myself to the will of God. Oh, uh, this thing happened without me planning it. Okay, I'm resigned to the will of God. Resignation is not the same as obedience to the will of God. See? Resignation is a, is a defeatist attitude. See? It is the attitude of somebody who just says, Okay, well, I can't do anything about it, so I'm just going to uh, ride along. No, that is not the virtue of obedience. That is not doing the will of God. Doing the will of God, if we are to obey the will of God in every day of our lives, okay, there has to be acceptance, a joyful, cheerful acceptance of the will of God. There has to be recognition, recognition that this is the will of God for us. And there has to be obedience, obedience. In other words, uh, the five elements have to come into play. Number one, humility, okay? Okay, be humble in accepting the will of God. Number two, be cheerful. Okay, uh, because if this, if you recognize this to be really the will of God for you, then you will accept it cheerfully, not grudgingly, not with a long face. Okay, and, and, and then uh, intelligently, you will have to accept the will of God intelligently and ask yourself, well, how is, how, what is the best way to carry this out? What am I supposed to do to carry this out? What am I supposed to do to, to, uh, to really fulfill what God is asking for me today? He made this happen. And that, that folks, uh, can happen from the smallest to the biggest things uh, in our lives. Okay? You walk out of your front door today and you happen to meet an accident and boom! Well, well uh, that could very well be the will of God for you. That day, well, how are you going to accept that? How are you going to deal with that? How are you going to apply obedience there? What is the best thing that you can do in order to make the best of that situation in your life? Or you get the good news that, uh, hey, uh, you fathers out there, your wife is pregnant. Oops, okay. Well, what am I going to do now about this situation? See? In obedience to the will of God, as a good father, what are you going to do? How are you going to obey that will of God for you for that moment, for, for giving you a new, uh, uh, new life, uh, entrusting you with a new life for that day? Oh, that day, for the rest of your life, right? How are you going to carry out the will of God in that sense? Or your boss tells you, you got to do this, you got to do that. We did this report, we need that thing. How am I going to obey? That is the will of God for you that time. How are you going to obey? The five elements of obedience are very good ways to understand how we should obey, how we will uh, uh, put into practice this virtue of obedience in everyday uh, matters in our lives. So folks, we've gone over time. I've been a little uh, long-winded in here. But anyway, obedience is tough. But when we learn how to obey, we'll be the happiest people. And hopefully it will make us saints. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, by the way, is the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. A great feast. I, I, I would encourage you to prepare for it very well by thinking about Our Lady today. And that and Our Lady was one of the most obedient right, of all the saints. That we can ask her. We can ask her and St. Joseph to help us grow in the virtue of humility, a vir virtue of obedience every day. Okay, we're rushing off to Mass, folks. See you next time. Bye-bye.